This is Karen Ramsey of Super Healthy Children, and I am here with Kevin Rogers at the Woodstock Fruit Festival up um, north of Woodstock in the Adirondacks, and um, we're talking here about raising healthy, raw, vegan children. Kevin, I know that you are raising children. Um, how many children do you have? Currently, I have a three and a half year old under my care. Okay. My partner's care as well, and she is expecting. We are expecting. Oh. Uh, in about five more months. Wonderful. So you will have two children. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about your child? Did your partner have a raw pregnancy? She did not. Okay. Although she started incorporating a lot of fruits and vegetables. We discovered Dr. Douglas Graham and the 81010 diet during the pregnancy. And due to a lot of uh, medical influence and societal and peer pressure, um, she was very scared of incorporating a full on raw food diet during her pregnancy. So she mm -hmm. started including more fruits and vegetables and noticed significant health improvements in that process. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, even during pregnancy, um, a woman might decide not to go 100% to raw foods, but can certainly start incorporating lots of fresh fruits and vegetables more than what she's been eating before. She found so. green smoothies. Oh, right. green smoothies are yeah. a great way to Give get an abundance of green vegetables and fruit. Um, and so, uh, when did she start incorporating, is she eating totally raw now? She's not eating totally uh -huh. raw, she's vegan, and uh -huh. she's eating a copious amount of fruits and vegetables because it's, it's quite abundant in the household. Wow, and so how is she feeling? She's feeling great. She's having another great pregnancy, and uh, great. Hopefully, it's a, hopefully it's another beautiful being that comes out just fine, yeah. Yeah. Some of the foods, uh, mm -hmm. he loves everything. He loves bananas, he loves his dates, he loves his, his figs, his peaches. We had a peach tree this year, so he got to pick peaches right off the tree, and he really enjoyed that. Uh, we have a mulberry tree, a couple mulberry trees in the backyard, and he'll lay under there naked and just picking the mulberries right into his mouth. And well, that's the best way to eat, getting the get, food from the source. <laughs> yeah, we were growing sun gold tomatoes the previous year, and we grew two plants of it and he seemed to just demolish them. So he grew four this year, and I still can't get any sun golds. He's just, every time they're ripe, he's out there picking them. Wow, so, yeah, cool. And stuff. what other foods does he like? Um, he requests cauliflower. He likes a snack on cauliflower. Um, there's really, it doesn't see, I haven't really found, the, a better way of phrasing that would be, I can't find any fruits and vegetables he doesn't seem to like yet. Um, some of the really cruciferous vegetables, like broccoli, he doesn't really request too much, but mm. occasionally he does like broccoli. And what about green smoothies? Does he like green smoothies? Oh, yeah. What's so you can like put lots green of smoothie? different greens. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that um, what I'm finding is that, you know, uh, when you um, give a fruit smoothie, a child likes it, but sometimes you put green in and then they have an aversion to the green. But because your child was raised on these fruits and vegetables, um, the, the aversion, I'm sure, doesn't exist. I, I haven't seen it. Wow. Just snack on celery by itself or in a smoothie, he has no aversion to a green smoothie. That's great. Yeah. That's great. And so what other things can you tell me about in your lifestyle that you find have created health in your child? Definitely. Um, we spend a lot of time at the parks, um, just roaming through the wilderness. Uh, a great idea suggested by you, Karen, as well, is finding a book on edible plants, or even they have even iPhone apps now, mm -hmm. so you can go around and find edible plants and flowers in your area to enjoy. We Wonderful. Love studying the seeds of plants, and we'll write them down in our little scavenger book and try to draw pictures of them. And so you're doing a lot of wild foraging. Yeah. That's great, because yeah. those foods are not farmed, so they don't have the pesticides and all that. Wow, that's great. And um, and what about attachment parenting? Do you and your partner practice attachment parenting following the emotional, mental, spiritual needs of your child? We do. He still nurses at three and a half years old. And we sleep in bed. 
all together. So you sleep together. Much to my detriment, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to sleep perpendicular to us to make oh, sure he's touching both of us. Yeah. And so, you won't regret it later on, I promise. I, I'm just joking. It, it is quite an enjoyable experience to get to go to bed with a kiss from your son and to wake up with him either giving you an affectionate kiss or a jumping on you, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, uh, due to Dr. Douglas Graham, he learned a trick of opening my eyelids and saying, <laughs> I want to play, Dad. <laughs> but it's, all, it's, it's a great way to start the day. That's fun. Yeah. Wow. And so, um, where you live, is it conducive to being outside most of the year? Most of Outdoors. the year. Outdoors. Where do you live? live? We live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Oh, so okay. It it's not cold. super cold? or It's not super cold. Uh-huh. And... It does snow, but and we try to take a. In fact, we try to take a trip down to someplace warm. Good idea. In, in, in the winter months. Yeah. But even then, we still, if it's winter, we still like to get outside and stay active. Great. It's essential for. Yeah, definitely, it's essential for growing children, and we did that a lot in the winter, where we would go to South America, mm. in the winter to catch the sunshine. We'd go to Costa Rica or Colombia or Mexico. We saved up during the year to go to a warm place in the winter time. You gotta set your priorities. We uh, we don't have the largest budget, mm -hmm. but we focus on getting organic produce. We try to grow as much as we can, and we do take a warm trip in the, in the winter months. We've been to Costa Rica the last two years as well. Wonderful, that's yeah. great. You can save, you can either buy a nice health insurance plan, or you can invest in a health assurance plan. Yeah, much better to invest in that preventive yes. insurance. That's great. And can you tell us um, a little bit about um, what you told me that you're doing some real simple recipes on YouTube? Oh, yeah. And can you tell us where people can locate those? Sure. You can see some of the work that Dakari and I do, or the, rather the play that we document, on uh, this YouTube channel. It's called Fruit for Life. And you can uh, just type in Fruit for Life and without any spaces, and you'll find our channel. Wonderful. Yeah. Great. Some recipes you can make with your child. He often uh, he sits on the counter and blends his own fruit. He enjoys that process. He enjoys trying to cut with a little knife, a little uh, butter knife. He tries to cut his little bananas. And, awesome. Yeah, he enjoys preparing food. Great. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you taking out the time to talk about your family. If you give kids fruits and vegetables at an early age, there's really not any resistance. They just enjoy it. And if you model the same behavior, I mean, it's just, a, it's, it's too easy, honestly. It is too you easy. And you eat. I mean, <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's all simplicity. Yeah. That's great. And you just feel good from it. You feel just constantly energetic and happy and the kids are just running around just um, doing whatever they want to do and just feeling excited and happy. You don't have children being sick. No, I haven't. I haven't had to experience that, but that's nice. Yeah. Well, good for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Karen.